As rescuers in Turkey and Syria continue the critical search for survivors, they're also getting much needed help from dogs, canines trained to help during disasters. And some of those dog teams are trained at a special facility in Southern California. And joining us right now is Denise Sanders. She is the Senior Director of Communications and Search Team Operations at the Search Dog Foundation, SDF. All right, good to see you. Uh, first of all, tell us about your group's response you know, to this earthquake. The Search Dog Foundation is a nonprofit organization. We train the dogs to be prepared for a moment like this. And then they are partnered with their first responder handlers. So they're actually deploying with their task forces, which in this case internationally is USA 1 and USA 2. They're on the ground in Turkey now. So on this mission are seven SDF uh, trained teams from Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department and Los Angeles uh, County Fire Department. So what have they told you about what they're seeing, what they're experiencing there on the ground? In this case, we don't have direct communication with the teams on the ground. We don't want to compromise the mission in any way. So all of the information we're receiving is through USAID. But what we're seeing from media outlets as well as what USAID is sharing, the dogs are certainly being used and they are going from site to site searching for anyone who may be left still alive in the rubble even days after this absolutely devastating earthquake. The training that goes into these dogs takes months and even years and is ongoing for their entire career but it's because the stakes are so high we know that it could be a matter of life and death using these canines to try and find survivors in the rubble. So talk to me about how and why these dogs are so effective uh, particularly for recoveries in disasters on scales like this. The dog's nose is far superior to any piece of technology we have yet. Uh, their noses are so much better at t t finding any little piece of scent. So what they're really looking for is to pick up any live human scent out there. And the reason being is it's a big game to them. We know that this is a very serious situation, but to them it's a big game because they think that their toy is at the end of this. So when they sniff out a live human scent, they're going to go and bark. It doesn't matter what the terrain looks like, they are not going to stop until they get to that strongest scent source. And when they do, they're going to bark and alert, and then their handler is going to reward them with that toy. And so in this way, we've conditioned them to play this game, if you will, it's a game to the dogs, that they continue to search and search and search where their handler directs them to make sure that they find every live human scent that they can smell but not see. So we've seen the images of all of these folks these amazing rescuers on the pile searching by hand, the dog is going to bypass them and look for that scent that they can't see, they can't put together with a human because they think that that person has their toy. And so it's really this, this pure game of hide and seek, if you will, to the canines, mm -hmm. whereas we know that the state is much higher than that. Wow, I mean, it's so extraordinary. And, and then I understand, you know, you, you call your pups, your, your dogs, um, rescued to rescue her. So give us the backstory of why they deserve that kind of title. These dogs are absolutely incredible. I know we only have a limited amount of time, but I could talk all day about how just inspirational they are in their resilience. Majority of our dogs are rescues, so they've come from either a bad situation. One of the dogs over there was picked up as a stray on the streets of Northern California by one of our rescue partners, and they saw in him the traits that we look for, which are the exact traits that make these dogs not very good pets. They're super driven. Mm. They have very high toy drive to the point of obsession. This is not necessarily the type of dog that you want in your house. They will not sit and watch TV with you on the couch. <laughs> they want to be active. They need a job. And so we're lucky enough to be able to give them that. But it's really that human canine connection, that bond that is so important and that we're seeing on display now as these teams are searching around the clock in Turkey. Because if you don't have that bond and that relationship mm -hmm. and that trust, you cannot do this job very well. It makes it much harder. And so 
the many weeks, months, and years that go into their training is really what that's all about. The skills are one thing and obviously very important, but it's really that bond and that trust that makes it so special, especially when you look back to where these dogs mm -hmm. started. So they truly go from rescue to rescuer and help save lives. Oh, so extraordinary. And of course, your, your team's doing very important work. Denise Sanders, thank you so much.